According to the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs, over 11,000 space objects have been launched and recorded in their online index. But this number is set to increase significantly as private companies and governments intend to launch tens of thousands of satellites into low Earth orbit, known as mega constellations. This trend is driven by the reduced cost of hardware and launch and the increased demand for low latency, high broadband internet to underserved locations. While US companies like Amazon, Canada's Telesat and UK's OneWeb propose mega constellation satellites in the order of the low thousands, US-based SpaceX alone has announced plans to launch 42,000 satellites as part of its Starlink project. If this happens, SpaceX will be responsible for a five-old increase in the number of satellites launched by all of humanity. Of those 42,000, they plan to have 11,926 launched in orbit by 2027. Also importantly, as the European Commission is currently studying the feasibility of a European-owned space-based communication system, and the Chinese government has created a company dedicated to creating and operating a 13,000 satellite broadband constellation, the soft power political and security element is also present, much as we see with global navigation. This means that some actors may enter this vertical, even if the business case is not evident. One of the big questions is, does servicing this increased demand warrant all the increased risks to and in low Earth orbit, the atmosphere and on Earth? COVID-19 showed us the extent of the digital divide problem. Those connected were able to maintain business or find new opportunities and continue their education. Those who were not, whether in rural areas, indigenous communities or in developing countries, found themselves further marginalized. This leads some to question whether there is a right to be connected. While low Earth orbit is not the only way to be connected, proponents argue that it is cheaper and faster, and this serves to bring many of the world's population into the 21st century. But should this goal be met at all costs? The astronomy community were one of the first communities to raise the alarm in a significant way about the risk posed to their activities by the brightness of satellite constellations. Namely, that the constellations cause streaks, diffuse background light, and cause radio noise that may prevent access to the sky. Essentially, two proposed rights are pushing against each other, the right to be connected versus the right to a dark and quiet sky. The space industry argues that there is no hierarchy to space activities, and everyone is free to explore space, subject only to the Outer Space Treaty. But as Article 1 of the Outer Space Treaty highlights, the freedom of outer space is subject to the condition that space be explored and used for the benefit and in the interests of all countries. In this case, what is benefit and who gets to decide? We must promote dialogue to ensure that space activities are and continue to be beneficial for all of humanity. Untracked debris is also a big risk as this could lead to potentially dangerous in-orbit collisions on a regular basis. Other less known risks include that satellite reentries could deposit more aluminium into Earth's upper atmosphere and the cumulative impact of thousands of rocket stages on the ocean's environment could be significant should these stages contain hazardous materials. But should we still be concerned as some operators seem to be listening? According to Telesat CEO, operators are following best practices regarding how to deal with debris and are designing satellites to minimize debris, protect the space environment, and are launching into the lowest orbit so that trouble satellites can decay quickly. And in response to astronomy concerns, SpaceX has been meeting with the astronomy community regularly and are innovating around a coating called DarkSat and a sunshade to address the brightness of satellites. The issue is, can we rely on the good faith of these actors? And some argue that what they're doing does not go far enough. For instance, in recent times, the news has reported controversy involving close approaches between a Starlink satellite and OneWeb satellites and the European Space Agency, where coordination did not work well. With no space traffic management system or global space situation and awareness capability, we may hear more of these issues. So what do we do next? The International Astronomical Union has now decided to take the issue of light pollution to the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, 
requesting that they protect the night's darkness for the sake of advancements in astronomy. But astronomers are just one stakeholder. Mechanisms will be needed to balance interests and encourage coordination. Bowley and Byers argue in the recent edition of Nature Journal that to address the myriad of concerns that will affect all communities, international cooperation is urgently needed along with a regulatory system that takes into account the effects of thousands of satellites, including action for improved space situational awareness, improved communication between operators, and internationally adopted right-of-way rules.